Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First things first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And I wanna ask you all, how are you doing out of 10? Um, it is a safe space here, so even if you are feeling bad, stick it down in the comments below. Would love to know, everyone can help you out. Personally, I think I'm about an eight, eight and a half this week. I've had some highs and some lows. Some of them have been really annoying and some of them have been quite good. My low of the week is that I had a rat, believe it or not, chew through the diesel tank on the 3200 forklift. Um, luckily, it is about halfway up, so we can still use it with a bit of diesel in the bottom, but unluckily, it is a 2,200 pound part. So I'm really pleased about that. High of the week, however, is we have actually started calving. The calves are doing really well, the mothers are doing really well, and we're really happy with them. They are a little bit early, but all of that gets explained in the video, so go get yourself a cup of tea, put your feet up the chimney, and I hope you enjoy what you see. It's been a really exciting start to the week here because we've had our first calf of the year. Just here, it's a little bull calf. Um, it's out of a heifer, it's doing really well. We've put her in here, that's mum just there at the back. Put her in here with these steers because um, there's quite a few heifers that are bagging up now and they were trying to take to the calf. So we thought we'll take her out of the equation, stick her in here, these steers won't give her any trouble and she can take to it. And she's doing really well, mothering it really nicely. Loads of milk, she's doing great. Now that heifer was a little bit earlier calving than you would expect because we shouldn't really start calving until the 1st of March. However, part of the reason why we have started calving that little bit earlier is because we use our EBVs to buy our bulls. We use them for loads of different reasons, to make sure we have easy calving bulls, to make sure they have good growth rates, we have fertility. And I'm gonna to explain to you about how they all work because I think this is a great opportunity to do that. That calf's dad is a bull called Lewis, and Lewis is a plus 27 on his calving ease. And that can correlate to him calving around two weeks earlier than other bulls. And that's why we have that one a little bit early. And I'm gonna to explain to you all about EBVs. I'll show you how they work as we go along through the video. But that's one of the things that we look for when we come to buying a bull. They can make you more efficient, more profitable. They can make sure that you don't have the calving problems. You can cut out a lot of vet bills. And it is so important that we do so because as farming gets more difficult, as we start to lose subsidy, we need to start and look at these things to increase our productivity. So I can hear some of you now going, whoa, James, what the hell are EBVs? Well, EBV stands for estimated breeding values. And that is all they are. What it boils down to is that they are a scientific way of giving you a good estimate of what kind of progeny an animal is going to produce. Now you can use them for cows, you can use them in sheep, you can use them in pigs, and I'm sure you can probably use them in other applications. Obviously for us, we use them in buying our bulls to produce our breeding stock, to get the right calves that we want that are gonna produce animals like this behind me. So why use them? Well, here's a bit of trivia for you. What do you think the two biggest kill dates for beef animals are in the UK? I'll tell you. Just before 16 months for bulls and just before 30 months for steers and heifers. For those of you who don't know, to reach the premium beef markets, a bull has to be slaughtered by the age of 16 months. And for a heifer and steer, a castrated male, to reach the premium beef market, they have to be killed by the age of 30 months. So killing them just before 16 months and just before 30 months indicates that as farmers, we're not producing livestock that is finishing quickly and finishing to spec. It means that we're generally running out of time and killing them before they actually get to the place where we want them. And that's not really a good place to be in. You can use EBVs for so many applications. If you're a dairy farmer, you can use them to increase your milk yields. If you're a beef farmer like us, you're gonna try and use them to increase the way that you produce your beef animals. Now we want an animal that is gonna grow well. We want one that's gonna carve easily. We want one that is going to finish within spec because that is what our job is all about. That's what we're trying to do with our animals. So that's what we use our EBVs for. And I'm gonna to explain to you what we look for when we're picking an animal and why we do it. This bull right here is Lewis. And this is the bull that is the father of that calf that I showed you earlier in the video. Lewis is the plus 27 on his carbonies, but he also weighs around about 1.1 tons. Most people think you're absolutely nuts when you put a bull this big on a 450 kilo heifer. But they're wrong because I know what the statistics are gonna tell me about this bull. Now, since we have started using EBVs, we have eradicated all of our calving issues that have been attributed to the bull, like having a massive calf. That calf that I showed you earlier, that weighs 36 kilos. But I know it's gonna grow well because the science tells me it's gonna grow well. Let's just have a look at our heifers. 
these are heifers that are going to pop any day. They're not very big. They weigh about 550 kilos, something like that on average. And we don't want a big cow because big cows are inefficient. Big cows are bad for your profit. So we want a smaller cow like this, but that means I can't have a massive calf, which is where the calving ease comes into the play. If I can get these cows to have a small calf, they'll carve it easily on their own and I won't have to interfere with them. That calf we seen on, earlier in the video, we found that calf late at night, just before we went to bed, it carved between sort of seven o'clock at night and nine o'clock at night on its own without any help, no fuss, no nothing. And that's the kind of cow we want to produce. That's the kind of calf we want to produce. So I'm gonna stick Lewis's EBVs up in the frame so that you can see them and I'll talk you through what we look for. He has a really, good carving ease. As I mentioned, he's like a plus 27. I think he's actually a plus 26.7, um, but yeah, really high. It's the best carving ease of his year when he was born. And he also has a really short gestation length, which is why we have that calf born a little bit early. And it also adds to his carving ease because obviously the shorter his gestation length, the less time it spends in the womb, therefore the less chance it gets to become a big calf. As well as that, he also has a really good 200, 400 and 600 day weight, which is proof that he grows really well. He's a grower, not a shower. And that means that we are, as beef farmers, looking at an animal that we can put weight on really quickly and really efficiently. Um, he also has a good carcass weight, which means that any of his animals will kill out well. They have a good percentage of kill out. So the average is like a 56, but we can expect a little bit more than that um, when we kill out a, one of the calves from Lewis. He also has a really high retail beef yield with that, which is a good thing because that means there's more beef that we can sell. But it's not all good news because he actually has a slightly small scrotum. Now, that might seem weird to some people, but actually scrotal size has a direct correlation to fertility. I don't know if that's the same in humans, though. Having a good big scrotum is a good sign in a bull, but we see him test our bulls every year anyway, so we'd know if he had a fertility issue, uh, but he hasn't shown anything yet to make us think that he would have. He also has a leaner fat depth, which means that he doesn't have so much marbling within his, uh, within his carcasses. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what kind of market you're trying to hit with your animals. Now, if you go to buy a bull from a sale, you won't get a graph that looks like that. What you'll get is something that looks a little bit like this. What that is, is what you'll find in a catalog underneath a bull. And it's the same thing, but it's in a numbered form. But what you'll notice is that underneath the numbers is a percentage score. That percentage score gives you an accuracy of the data. Now you'll never get anywhere near 100%. That's gonna be pretty much impossible to ever do. But if you're anywhere over 50%, you can take that as a good indication that you're on the right path. But bear in mind that if you're gonna buy a bull that is potentially of a lesser known breed, then there's gonna be less animals into the data and therefore the percentage score is gonna be a bit lower. Understanding EBVs for me is really important and it's something that you can use on your farm to try and help you produce better animals, whether it's beef cattle, sheep or pigs or whatever. But there is going to be something new crop on the scene for the beef industry and it's already been used in the pig and poultry industry to great effect and it's something called genomics. Now I'm not going to get too far into this because this could blow your mind, but it is an incredible asset to us as farmers. Genomics in the beef industry is going to allow us to look at animals from a DNA level and use SMPs, SNPs, or to give them their sexy name, single nucleotide polymorphisms, in order to see what actually makes an animal do the things that it does. For example, what makes it gain weight well, what makes it a really efficient feeder, what makes it carve easily, or what makes me really excited is what makes an animal more susceptible to disease. And we can then use that information alongside EVVs to produce the animals that we want in the future and make sure that we have a healthier herd for ourselves, a more productive herd, and also a healthier herd as a nation. We've been buying bulls based upon EBVs for 10 or so years now, and it's made an enormous difference to our farm. I would never go back to buying them the old way because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Why would you just turn up at a market and go, oh, I like the look of that one, I'll take it home? Because you wouldn't do that with a car, or else we'd all drive around in really flash cars. You also consider the fuel economy and the road tax and how practical it is for you. So why should buying a bull be any different? Getting your head around EBVs does take a little bit of work and it took me a while too. 
But there is loads of information out there. You can go on the internet and find whatever it is that you need to find. And if you are looking at buying a bull with EBVs and you're looking at a specific breed, go to their Breed Society website. You can find all the EBV information that you want to find about whatever it is that you are trying to buy. And if you're still struggling, I'm sure there's someone that you can phone up at that Breed Society who can help you out. And that's it for another video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And let me know how you're doing out of 10 in the comments down below. If you have any questions about EBVs, stick them down there as well. I'd love to answer them. I love talking about EBVs. It's one of my favorite subjects, that grass growth and soil health. Um, so if you have any questions, please stick them down there. I will answer them if I can. And I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.